If you like the colors of saltwater fish, but the simplicity of freshwater, peacock cichlids may be your answer. Stay tuned for another cichlid adventure. Oh, I see better color, I see more activity, my fish breed. I have a full line pet store. I have fish tanks where I have epistogrammas breeding. I have fry. I have lots of fun stuff going on. And it's all because of that. that that's part of it. <clears throat> uh, I carry the big size in my store because my customers love this stuff. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and another in my series of cichlid adventures with Rick Biro. Rick is a pioneer in African cichlid keeping here in the United States. In fact, he brought many of the species that we enjoy today to the U.S. from Africa back in the 1970s. And he has an amazing fish farm in Florida where he grows the fish that we buy in stores all across the United States. So today in my interview with Rick, some video of his amazing cichlids and some more information on how to keep peacocks. Well, you know, um, I've been, I'm probably most well known for peacocks since I've been in business. They're a wonderful fish, they're a colorful fish. When I first started doing this, when I was bringing in wild peacocks in the 70s, people wanted two males and 20 females. Everybody wanted to breed them. Now it's the exact opposite. Um, they want an all-male peacock tank. It's a super, the coloration you can get off of 10 or 12 varieties is almost as close to salt water as you can get. They're relatively peaceful. They're not like a haplochromus who might want to fight. They do get along well together. If you had a few females in there, you know, you'd get a, uh, some breeding going on, and which would be easy. But in this tank right here, I have about uh, seven or eight varieties. Um, this, for example, is a lemon jake. Um, it's a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, see it's kind of a purplish fish, got the nice dorsal on it. This is a uh, red top Lawanda. Here's another one right here, more aggressive. Um, this is a sunshine peacock. All these are lawn acaras, but I call them peacocks just for simplicity. Red peacock, which is a hybrid. This is a bicolor 500, um, color because it's blue, then it's got the, the copper and then the blue. This is another hybrid, uh, uh, an uh, OB zebra. I've got uh, red shoulder peacocks in here. There's another lemon jake. So the variety you can have amongst these selves and the color you can get is incredible. These things will get to be four or five inches long. If you had a tank where these fish were, they would maintain the open water. You have rocks in the back with their, your embunas in it and it would make a lovely uh, tank and it would be an active tank. And there would be, uh, they, like I said, they're not as aggressive as a hap might be or something like that. So it's a wonderful fish. And, and this is, these are the, overall peacocks are the number one fish on my farm. What people come at me the most for is my peacocks. Now, talk to me about uh, your, your food, because it's getting peacocks in those colors, that's what people want. Right. And that's what you've kind of developed your food right. to do. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been on my current farm since 1974. Um, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of fish we feed a day, but we have over the years developed our food, which is extreme aquatic foods, not so much we did we ever develop for selling it per se out to the hobbyists. What we did was I needed a food on my farm I could feed one time per day, provide everything I needed for my fish, every color that I needed for my fish. A lot of foods out there are good at one color, bad at another color. My food is good for every color. The fish here that you see here, the lemon jake or the bicolor, it got that color off of one food because it's a balance. Now, we do, we're not scientists. What we are is people who observe what's going on. So over the 40 years, if we would see that we were losing a color, it would be why? Well, we're out of shrimp meal, been out of it for a month and a half. Okay, well, shrimp meal's important. We learned over the years, and that's how we developed our food. So a lot, if, if I had to feed some other foods that are out there that are good foods, I would have to feed my farm two, three times a day in order to get what I'm getting here. Plus, all the balanced nutrition, I am able to do with 200 females what it used to take me 400 females to do as far as breeding goes, production, etc. So at the end there, Rick is talking about how he arrived at the formula for the extreme 
food product for his fish and uh, that he feeds at his fish farm. And I will tell you, I don't endorse products. That's not part of what FinCasters is all about. But if I use a product and I see the results that people are talking about, I will verify that a product does what the sponsor claims. And in the case of the extreme foods, I can tell you that I've been feeding it to this aquarium beside me and I am seeing a lot more colors coming out, especially in my geophagus. And there's also a pair of discus in this tank and uh, actually some uh, dwarf cichlids over there as well. And I can tell you firsthand that the colors are more amazing since I started feeding exclusively the extreme food. So, if you will, there's some food for thought. And remember, I have a series of FinCasts on freshwater topics. Just click the box if you'd like to see that. Also, specifically, a whole series of FinCasts devoted to cichlids. So, you can click the other box if you want to just see cichlids. Remember, there is a new FinCast every Sunday. So, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. And I'll see you in the next FinCast.